the injury recall technique was discovered by a podiatrist and later adapted to AK by Dr. Wally Schmidt. And I had the great fortune of studying not only with Goodhart for my certification, but Wally as well. Wally is right up there with the top kinesiologists in the world. And he was, Wally, he, Wally was George Goodhart's next door neighbor when he was a kid. So Goodhart, when he was discovering all this, would use Wally as his guinea pig. And so Wally was so impressed, he went on to become a chiropractor and work in Goodhart's office and then teach with him. Now muscles retain a memory of an injury even after the injury is healed. They have a, a neurological and uh, feedback that this is injured. So now what happens then is the injury never heals until you erase the memory of that injury, which means you're susceptible to mo more injuries. Particularly good, again, with athletes, particularly football players or boxers that are bam, getting like, you know, I remember one of my students worked with uh, uh, Tomlinson, you know, Ladanian Tomlinson, and he said on uh, CNN, he said, every time I would go to a football game, it'd be like getting in six car accidents <laughs> every game. Well, injury recall is great for people like that, but good for everybody, as you'll see. Now, it can also be a surgical incision, a tooth extraction, a skin or a burn, an injection of a needle or a cesarean. So anyone that's had that, this is great for those things. And it's also useful for releasing stress from old injuries, increasing range of motion, head, neck, and spinal injuries, migraine headaches, sprained ankles, and after a root canal or a mammogram. And so if you don't clear the injury of uh, the memory of the injury, the old injury, it will make you susceptible to future injuries in that area. Also fatigue, it fatigues the body to have to re retain the memory of the uh, injury of that muscle. So you don't have this high of energy and then it makes your body stiff. It leads to neurological disorganization and drains energy to the muscles in that area. So it's a major factor here. Now, every time a person's hurt, the body limits the range of motion to protect itself. So, you know, you get an injury, it says, okay, we better not go so far, we better not go so far, and more and more over time, we come stiffer, stiffer, stiffer. So after years of injuries, the major loss of flexibility can occur. The three most devastating injuries to the body neurologically are a root canal, a mammogram, and a sprained ankle. And this is because there's a lot of nerve endings in that area, particularly the root canal. There's so many in the mouth, which give feedback to the entire nervous system. And Goodhart also discovered that there was a neurological tooth relationship that each tooth relates to different muscles that affect different organs. So teeth are really important. And here's what Wally said about this technique. He said, if you can clear out old muscle memories of injuries, it is the single most powerful thing you can do to help a patient. And that is his first thing. He says, that's why we're teaching it in the first class. He says, begin with this because you get so much bang for the buck. And it's a very simple technique that you'll see when we bring Elena up here. So Elena, why don't you come on back up and we'll see what you've got. So you mentioned you've had, in fact, why don't you lie on the table here and you've had some, um, I think some things going on with your feet, yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. You also have, um, I believe, um, canal. root canals, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what you do. You first, um, you can take uh, an indicator muscle, see that it's strong, and I'm just going to check to make sure when she brings her head back that it's strong, because if there was problems with her neck that that made it weak, then that would be what's causing it to go weak. So here's what you do, is I touch an area, Now you said you had some heel issues? Yes. Okay, so I'm touching the heel and see what happens before she puts her head back, she's strong. Now put your head back and it goes weak and that indicates the need for this technique. So we're going to correct that in a bit, but let's see if there's any other areas. Did you, um, I think you said there was something over here with the big toe. Let's see if that shows up and hold and now back like that. So that one doesn't show. So we know this, the heel needs to be corrected. So let's, before we do that though, let's check, check her range of motion. What I'm gonna do is you tell me when you feel a stretch and I'm just gonna bring the adductor out here and see how far we go. 
pretty flexible here. Do you feel a stretch yet? No. Okay, tell me when. Maybe now. now, okay, so we're a little less than 90 degrees, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see if that improves after we do all these procedures, okay? So you can work the ankle or the neck. So I'll demonstrate the neck because that's the one we like to start with. It's the easiest to learn. So what you're going to do is actually you're going to hold your heel where we, we touched it right there. So she's touching the area that tests for this. Do you know if you banged your heel at all or anything that might have happened? No, not, no, yeah, but the fact is it's got a soreness there. So you and, relax and the neck well. and it's swollen, okay? So you relax the neck. I'm just gonna do very gentle movement like this. So what I'm doing is I'm lifting her head and bringing it up into flexion. Just breathing deeply. And I'm basically bringing particularly the C1 flexed at the head. That's the main thing you're doing here. So about six or eight times is fine. Okay, so now let's have you bring this back and I'm touching the knee. So we're telling the brain, how is it going here? Well, it goes back into extension and it's now strong. So that shows it's been cleared. So let's see, are there, um, you mentioned the root canals, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have her touch a tongue on a tooth that had a root canal. Now the tongue is also a way to circuit locate, which means touch and then test. So she's touching there, that's fine. Now go into extension and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Now have you had them on the other side too? Oh yeah. Okay, I want you to put your tongue on the left side now. And when you kind of bite down on the tongue, you're circuit locating that side. So hold there and now back into extension and that goes weak. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna clear those. So again, what she does is she puts the tongue on the tooth or teeth, you can do multiple ones on that side. So kind of bite down on the tongue just gently so it's touching them. And then I just bring her back into neck flexion. Ready, and just relax. And okay, now let's do the other side. So touching. Was I supposed to touch it? I didn't yeah. touch it. Oh, you didn't touch it? With, with the right side? With your tongue, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So let's do that again. Yeah, make sure your tongue is touching the teeth. And so breathing and just relax your head. I'll do all the work for you. That's what you want him to say. Just let you do the work. And okay, now let's go to the other side. So touch just the tongue to the other side. So it's getting upper and lowers and breathing. And it's kind of a way of erasing it in the cerebellum. That's what it's accomplishing. Okay, so now let's have you take the tongue away for a second. And whenever I'm touching something like an area, I like to take it away and then touch again and then see what happens. Because it's like, a, it lets the body know, oh yeah, we're not touching that anymore. Okay, now we're gonna touch it. So in case it tuned it out, kind of like a ticking clock, you don't notice, it brings it back. Oh yeah, this is what we're testing. So now she's touching the right, okay, and head back. And if it goes strong, it shows it's clear. Now touching the left, and that strong, that means it's good. Wow. Now have you, in, yeah, have you had any other areas that you've had challenges? Even a muscle, it doesn't, it can even be a muscle that you've had challenges with. I had a long time ago, ham, low left hamstring torn. Okay, lo, left hamstring, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll touch it for you. Okay, head back. Oh, we got another one, okay. Now this time I'm gonna show, it's not in your notes, but I'm gonna show the ankle. And it's very simple. She's gonna to touch the left hamstring back there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, it's the talus bone, that's the top ankle bone, uh, right under the tibia and fibula. And I'm gonna pull that down by just taking my fingers and going like this to push it down where the thumb will be on the bottom of the foot so you can kind of see what I'm doing there. Ready? Yeah, and just keep uh, touching the hamstring. And I really only need to do it like once or twice, but I did it four times. Here's another way you can do it, is I can put my thumbs on the top of the talus and just pull like a little jerk down like that. Sheldon Deal often does it that way. Wally does it like this. So that was the original discovery by the guy who did the, the podiatrist that figured this technique out. And what he, he, the way he described it is when you injure yourself, you tend to cringe like, mm, 
and you, you actually tighten and you go back into a extension of the neck and your uh, talus where the foot is, it kind of comes in. So you're bringing it out and it's an interesting, simple technique, but I've seen profound results with this. So now let's yeah, take the hand away for a second, touch it again, and now head back and there you go. So you can actually, f you can test the head and extension. I also could have jammed the talus joint, but I don't generally like to do that or jam the talus into the mortise joint. This is called the mortise joint here. So I'd be like pounding on the bottom of the foot. That's another way you can check it. In fact, I might demonstrate that. Any other areas that have had a challenge? I had herniation of lower discs, lower back, and okay. herniation of the upper spine. Okay, let's, uh, let's start with the lower back. Touch that. And I'll test that. Now, by the way, if it goes weak when they just touch it, that could be that you need to do some correction on it, like balancing the muscles. But it also could be this, is if they touch it and then they go into flexion and it now goes strong, you could go ahead and do the injury recall. Because it's saying if I do what would correct it and that makes it strong, let's go ahead and correct it. But it was strong in the clear, so now she's going to go into extension and let's see what happens. Aha! So there we got another one. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. So again, without going into the extension, that's strong. Now I'm going to tap the bottom here to jam the mortise joint and hold again and see it go weak. So it's either jam the mortise joint or put the neck in extension. And if it goes weak while she's touching the area, it says you need injury recall. So here's what I'm going to do. I'll just start with the foot. Is it on both sides, by the way? Yeah, so I'm going to do both feet. So while she's touching that area, I'm going to just do here. And then I'll do this one here. Okay, so again, what I'm doing is I'm pulling the talus out of the mortise joint. Looks like that while the, the thumbs are on the bottom of the foot. So that's simple technique. And let's do the head too. You can do both. It never hurts to do them both. So now I'm going to put you into flexion. And let's see now when, again, take the hand away for a second. Now touch there again. Head back into extension. And look at that. It's strong. Okay. So now we have the upper one you mentioned, right? And see, you could do this for a long time. In fact, that's one, the one student that said, wow, I felt so great after doing the structural. She said, the main thing I remember, besides all the other stuff, was clearing out all these injuries, which we do in the hands-on classes, though I want you to practice this week and have people do it work on you. You don't have to have an expert muscle tester come and test you. You just tell somebody how to push on your arm. In fact, I'll have you test me in, in, in a moment when we're done here. And then you can check if the flexion makes it strong. When you're going back, it goes weak. Then you know, okay, and you can do it. In fact, I did that the other day where I injured something I think it might have been my shoulder, and I just did like this. While I touched the shoulder, <laughs> I did my own injury recall, and it was like, wow, feels great now. So it's a great little self-help technique. Okay, so touch the neck where you said you had some challenges. Okay, hold as I push. Now go into extension. Another one. So keep touching the neck, and I'll fix this one now. Okay, and relax. See how we're doing here. Okay, now let's take the hand again away for a second and back touch again and go into extension. And there we cleared another one. Now, uh, we could go on and on, but you get the point. And again, next time we work together, we can go and find other ones because a lot of times, what, here's what Wally does. He has a picture of an outline of a body, you know, picture of a you know, drawing of the body front and back. And he says, put an X wherever you had an injury. And then when the person comes in, he checks every area and sees if they need it. And most of the time, each area will need the injury recall technique. And it's a great way to clear some major neurological blockages. So let's see if we got any shift in your flexibility. Now before, you're a little less than 90 degrees. So tell me when you feel a stretch now. Okay, we're now past 90. Oh my gosh. Maybe not. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you were, 
she got basically, <laughs> you got that much more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you, can you feel the difference in how much? Yeah, much, much, much easier. Yeah. So there you go. So that shows you how just clearing this can give you phenomenal results in making you more flexible in that. Good work, eh? Okay, why don't you stand up and see how you're feeling, and then I'm going to have you test me, and we'll show you how easy it is because you're brand new to muscle testing. You've yes. not really had it before, like other 20 than years 20 ago. years ago uh -huh, when you were a toddler. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, let me touch this shoulder. First, just push on my arm gently. Can you, is it hard? Yeah, just push down gently. Okay, ready? And push. Just make sure. Okay, you're pushing way too hard. So <laughs> it's going to be about a quarter of that pressure. Just okay. very light. Push. Great. And now I'm touching again. Push. Okay, that's good. Now I go into extension and push, ah, see there it go. So now I can touch here and I'll just sit here and have you do it. And so you put your hand on my head and I'll just let it drop and you're gonna go like that, okay? So, yeah, and you just bring it back up. Pretty easy, huh? Mm -hmm. And I could have been doing that too. So let's see. I can't remember if that was the shoulder, because I mentioned I, I corrected something, but I can't remember what it was. Okay, now I'll go back in extension, and now it's strong. Mm -hmm. See, so you can have somebody else correct you. Before testing, you notice that I uh, brought her hip into a joint into abduction to measure flexibility. Now, it could have been any joint, but that one's one that's easy to test, because you see how far they go out, and then afterwards, she, she looked like she got another 30 degrees of of extension there. Now we have the person CL an old injury and test a previously strong indicator muscle and if it's test weak the area needs further balancing before proceeding with injury recall but remember even if it does test weak in the clear go into neck flexion and if that goes strong it's okay to go ahead and do that. Now if it's, it is strong which it was in her case every time we tested we put her neck into extension while she was continuing to touch the area. And that's when we found it went weak, meaning you need injury recall. Now movement of the neck or ankle joint activates the mechanoreceptors in the brain. Well, it's actually in the neck particularly. And that receives stimuli from the person's touch of the area. So your neck has more mechanoreceptors, which means they're, they're nerve cells that test its position. And you'll notice that the neck is so sensitive to touch. So that's why working the neck in that way has a profound way of clearing it. And the ankle also has so many of these receptors. So while the correction is they touch the area, or if it's hard to reach, like in the heel, I was touching it, but she could actually touch it, I think, in, in her case. But sometimes I'll touch the area. Ideal is if they touch it. So. We tilt the head as far as it'll go, or at least where we're, we're getting this joint here, the atlas on the, the neck, the head, that's where we're particularly wanting to move. So you can bring it up, but as long as that's moving, that's the key to the technique. So you repeat about five to 10 times, and then retest as the person CLs the old injury and hyperextends the neck, and it should now test strong and then recheck the hip flexion and you should notice an improvement and this correction assists overall body flexibility and again as Dr. Wally Schmidt did you can have people draw an X or circle any areas on their body on a drawing where they may have had injuries as well as ask about root canals because in many cases that would be uh, a primary thing to correct for people as also mammograms so they would just touch the breast tissue and then if they go weak when they go into extension that's where you're going to do the same correction as they touch that so it's a very simple correction